Hi, I'm John Speed. I'm not that smart, but I'm joined by someone who is. Today, I've got Dustin Kirkland, VP of Engineering at ChainGuard. How are you doing today, Dustin? I'm well, thank you for having me. Yeah, glad, glad you're here. Uh, today, we're gonna be asking the question, what is a CVE? What is a CVE? John Speed, a CVE is a common vulnerability and exposure. It is a named and numbered vulnerability as registered in the National Vulnerability Database, administered by MITRE. It's basically a way of cataloging known security problems in software. It's a public database anyone can see, anyone can search, and it's super important both for the developers of that software, who are usually notified when their software has uh, an identified vulnerability. They want to know that so that they can go and fix it. Everybody wants to know that, to know if their software is actually vulnerable and that there would, would be updates available. Typically, when a CVE is fixed, the developers of that software will tag that software as fixing CVE dash, usually a, a year, and then a digit, several digits, usually four digits, that identify that vulnerability. Um, it's easy to search for the vulnerabilities based on the unique number. Uh, it's easy to find the fixes that address that vulnerability by looking at, in open source software, looking at uh, change logs in, in the, the software. In closed source software, uh, release notes will show that, you know, fixes CVEs one, two, three, four, and five. Mm. I was wondering, is there a way to assess the severity of a CVE? So there is a generally a, a recommendation or rating from the vulnerability database itself on how severe it is. Those aren't always accurate. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a group of people doing the best they can with a bunch of software that they are not necessarily the owners or operators or developers of. And so, you know, the whole process relies on more expert people in the field who know that software, who've maybe used it in anger, who can better assess how uh, severe that vulnerability is. Anywhere from critical to high to medium to low, uh, there's also a numerical scale that can be used, but generally the, you know, English uh, words critical high, medium, and low uh, will convey how important that vulnerability is. What happens when a CVE gets introduced to a piece of software? What's the process at that point? Well, first of all, the introduce happens when someone's writing that code, commits it, ships that software thinking that they've produced a beautiful thing, typically. Uh, and most software as shipped isn't shipped with known vulnerabilities, okay? Unless something really malicious is happening. I don't think we're going there. If you no, want to go there, no, we can no, go there. No, not today. Okay. So, we're not going there. But it's um, it's it's usually a benign commit. It's someone someone wasn't it's a commit of uh, changes to software, or new features added to the software that's meant to do one thing, but as it turns out, if it's coded incorrectly or if someone uses it in a way that it wasn't intended, then that software could become vulnerable to hacking. Uh, and there's a lot of different forms that can take. You could simply make the system crash and uh, a, a malicious user could use that to take down a website, right? Um, a user could, uh, a malicious user could also use an exploit to elevate their permissions to do something they weren't intended to do with that system, maybe access uh, passwords or bank account inf information. Um, a user, uh, a malicious user could also use an exploit to exfiltrate data, to get in, to grab a whole bunch of data, get out before anyone notices. Um, some users, malicious users could use that exploit to get in, plant their own uh, back doors, and then lay dormant for months or years potentially until they want to use that back door. So there's a lot of different things that could happen, uh, but when it's introduced is usually just someone doing their normal job as a day-to-day as a -day developer. It takes someone else typically to identify that, oh, you know what, that wasn't implemented correctly, and so now we've got uh, a buffer overflow or uh, a memory exception. And would you say in the modern world, is there a CVE problem? If so, what is it? It's, it's a good question. I mean, is it a problem? Uh, it's a problem that we have vulnerabilities in software. Yes. Uh, are there more vulnerabilities now than ever before? Well, by one measure, yes, sure. You can look at the graph and it's up and to the right at a you know, tremendous trajectory. Um, was it always that way and we just didn't know before? Um, or is this new because we're, you know, we're creating more software or we're not, as, we're not developing software as securely as before? 
I, that's a, probably a more academic question than, than I'm set up to answer. Um, the problem that I think we have is not addressing known vulnerabilities. That's a very solvable problem. Um, when there is a vulnerability that's known and there is a fix available upstream, that there's really no excuse for not having that fix applied uh, practically as quickly as that fix was made available. Um, within the Linux distro world, the distributions of open source software, there are various velocities in how quickly those fixes make it to users or in some cases never make it to users or there's years in between uh, leaps in versions of software that address those vulnerabilities. That's where I think the problem lies is unaddressed uh, CVEs. And how do we make sure then uh, that CVEs do get fixed in modern software? What is the process? What does one a company have to do? Yeah, so I mean, if you're no matter what operating system you're running, apply your security updates. Uh, you know, Patch Tuesday was a thing introduced by Microsoft many years ago. Uh, whether it's a, a, a Red Hat RPM or a Debian Ubuntu system, if there are updates available, patch those updates. Now, uh, users of that software uh, are only able to apply the patches that are available by their distro. And you know, here the I think the chain guard plug that hopefully I'm okay making here is that we're we're patching software faster than any distro has ever patched before. In part because we've taken a distro less. A less of a distro approach to that. Um, we're monitoring release monitors uh, constantly and when our automation sees that a new upstream release has been cut that addresses CVEs, we build, test, and ship that, make it available at least, bump the latest tag uh, within minutes or hours to the open source release, uh, open source upstream release, uh, which in many cases are months to years sooner than those releases will find their way into you know, another distro. Yeah, fabulous. Well, now I know more about CVEs. Dustin, I have one final question for you. All right, hit me. What is your favorite aquatic animal? Well, I love scuba diving, and uh, we had the privilege of going to the Atlanta Aquarium earlier this week, and that whale shark was, that was something else. It'd be a dream of mine to swim with the whale sharks. Um, yeah, that's a bucket list item for me. Well, thank you, Dustin. And now we've gotten smart in five minutes on CVEs.